Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. I'd like to thank everyone for uh, attending our webinar today on the LED Happy and uh, how it operates. A little bit of uh, information, further information about it. Uh, thanks for attending. And we'll be covering a couple different topics uh, today, uh, including an uh, introduction to uh, PAPIs and the LED PAPI, a little bit on sighting overview, aiming of the uh, LED PAPI, and kind of a general theory of operation. So first of all, to cover the uh, regulatory requirements for any PAPI system uh, in the FAA market, of course, they are governed by an advisory circular, specifically 150-5345-28. And the FAA defines two different types of PAPIs. Uh, one is what we call a style A, or a voltage-driven PAPI. And the other is a style B, or a current-driven PAPI. Installation and siting guidelines for the FAA market are covered in Advisory Circular 150-5340-30. For the rest of the world, they are covered by ICAO requirements, which are found in Volume 1, Annex 14. Also covered in the Aerodrome Design Manual, Part 4, the Visual Aids Manual. And in Canada, they are covered by Transport Canada, uh, TP312. And also their Advisory Circular, 300-006. A little bit about the photometrics for both the FAA and ICAO market. Uh, and they define the uh, light output, specifically the red and white transition of the uh, PAPI, that it occurs within an angle of three minutes of arc at the beam center, or five minutes of arc at the beam edges at 1,000 feet or 300 meters, and that it be a sharp transition from white to red. So the LED PAPI is compliant with those FAA, Transport Canada, and ICAO specifications. And this specification is to find either a four-box PAPI system, which for the FAA would, call, would be called an l 880, or an abbreviated or two-box PAPI system, which again in the FAA market would be defined as an L881. For voltage-driven PAPIs, which are mostly used in the U.S. market, uh, input voltage would be between 215 to 265 volts at either 50 or 60 hertz. And that can be modified in the field to operate from 108 to 132 volts AC. Or they could be current driven from a series circuit operating between 2.8 and 6.6 .6 amps. The uh, ADB LED PAPI mounts on a three leg design to give it greater stability. So one of the advantages in the FAA market, especially of the LED PAPI, is that uh, the input voltage is fed directly to the first light unit in the string of two or four. Uh, for traditional PAPI designs, we would have a voltage box or a voltage master box associated, associated with each set of PAPIs that would be mounted uh, either to the rear or off to the side of the other PAPI units. And the FAA is becoming more and more restrictive on devices on the airfield 
that uh, could interfere with the runway safety area. So they prefer not to have that additional voltage box uh, mounted next to the pappies. And so that has been done away with with the LED uh, pappy design. The other thing is that by use of an LED lighting source, we get a much clearer uh, transition on the, uh, the light output at different steps. Uh, there is no uh, color shift that would be uh, typical of an incandescent happy system on either the red or the white, especially noticeable on the uh, white light output. So you do not have that with an LED happy. So the way the PAPI is designed, the LED PAPI is designed, we actually use only red and white LEDs to generate the PAPI output. So there is no filter associated with the LED PAPI as you would find in a, a traditional quartz or incandescent PAPI light unit. Of course, you have the other advantages associated with LED technology, such as a much longer life of the light source compared to incandescent uh, bulbs, which uh, we estimate at over 75,000 hours. That is compared to uh, a traditional PAPI, which would be using lamps that are rated uh, at approximately 1,000 hours at the highest uh, uh, output level. Of course, the other major advantage of an LED PAPI would be in energy efficiency. So we estimate that the LED PAPI is using 70% uh, less energy. Uh, typical designs, as you can see here, compared to a uh, ADB single channel PAPI, which uses 305 watts, watt lamps inside the unit, uh, the uh, LED PAPI requires 62% less energy for a traditional two lamp PAPI which would use two 200 watt lamps per light unit, uh, we would be using 70% less energy. And against a, a three lamp uh, PAPI, uh, we would be using 80% less energy by moving to LED technology. So the other advantage, of course, to using LEDs is a reduced maintenance cost. So not only do you have the cost of the lamps that are no longer needing to be replaced every uh, 1,000 to 1,500 hours, but you also have the time associated with going out to the pappies and uh, replacing the lamps on a continuous basis. So here are some examples of the return on investment just dealing with those, those maintenance costs uh, over an incandescent pappy system. The uh, inside the uh, LED PAPI, instead of using uh, for tilt switch operation or for measuring the, uh, the vertical angle of the PAPI, uh, we no, no longer would use a uh, mercury device or a uh, manual aiming device or electronic aiming device, but we actually use an electronic inclinometer uh, inside the PAPI, inside of each light box of the PAPI to measure the, uh, the vertical angle. So this both displays the vertical angle and the horizontal le uh, level of the PAPI on the outside of the box. But it also serves as the tilt switch uh, for uh, device for PAPIs that would require that functionality. And what it does is to de-energize the PAPI string of all the light units if the optical output or the, uh, the optical pattern of any light unit is raised between half a degree and one degree, or it's lowered between a quarter of a degree and a half a degree with respect to the setting of the, uh, of the light unit. Uh, that functionality is optional uh, outside the FA market, but can be easily enabled if, you, uh, if so desired. So this is what the digital display looks like on the outside of each happy uh, light box. And what it does is normally displays the vertical angle of that PAPI device. And it also is used to show any diagnostic messages or error messages 
associated with the PAPI system to indicate a fault or a warning on the PAPI without the need to open up the, the, light, or the light unit to determine that there is, a, there is an error. Now, one of the other advantages to the LED PAPI is that we use a heated glassware system. In a traditional PAPI, uh, heat is generated by the, uh, the halogen bulbs, uh, lamps associated with the PAPI, which generates enough heat to uh, keep the glass free of frost uh, or, uh, or any moisture on the, uh, on the PAPI light unit. LEDs do not generate heat in the same way and require an additional method of keeping that glass clear. So what we have done is use a special coating on the, uh, uh, on the, the front glass system that will generate heat to keep that area clear. And we generate enough heat to actually uh, remove any uh, frost or moisture from the front lens within three minutes if the temperature is between minus 21 degrees centigrade to 55 degrees centigrade, which is minus 6 Fahrenheit to 131 degrees Fahrenheit. And if it gets a little bit colder outside, it may take a little bit longer, but the heater is still uh, warms the glass up enough to remove that uh, uh, any uh, frost or moisture from the lens. For ICAO systems, uh, the system will automatically not uh, uh, produce any light output until it's gone through that uh, that warm-up period when the system is first turned on. FAA systems are required to have full light output immediately, and so uh, they will go ahead and turn on the light output. That uh, option either way can be easily selected using an option switch inside the, uh, the PAPI units. There is an additional benefit to the uh, LED PAPI and to the uh, defroster on the glass that uh, again, as an option, you can turn on that heater with no light output at steps one and two of a five-step series circuit uh, so that it will keep that, that glass warm when the PAPI is not in use. And then when you uh, put the PAPI system at step three or higher, then the PAPI uh, light output will come on but still uh, allow the... Uh, 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 PAPI full operation instantaneously when, uh, the, the, when uh, the current is applied to it. There are a number of different operational and control modes that are available with the PAPI system. Um, most common operation is just to turn it on and uh, it is uh, designed uh, to if it's on, if it's a, a, a current-driven PAPI, it just comes on to whatever uh, step the uh, constant current regulator is at for the series circuit that is uh, driving the PAPI unit. If it is a voltage-driven system, then uh, we have various options that are available. For example, that would just allow it to be controlled by a photocell so that during the day it operates at full intensity and at night it will typically drop down to either 5 or 20 percent of the uh, rated uh, light output and operate uh, in that mode, and that is selectable in the field. We can also interlock it with a, a series circuit nearby so that uh, the PAPI does not come on unless, for example, the runway edge or the threshold lights are on at the same time. Maintenance is very similar to uh, what we use on uh, the other uh, traditional PAPI systems. Uh, field replaceable components include the front glass, the inclinometer assembly, the main control board, power supply board, and even the LED light engine are easily replaced in the field. Uh, parts that could not be field replaced include the, uh, the sealed lens assembly inside the light unit. For the uh, for FAA operation, again, they, uh, they do define as part of their uh, advisory circular 
and a, a CERT alert that was put out a number of years ago that the system must operate continuously when the runway is in service. This was to allow the PAPI lights to uh, produce enough heat to keep the front glass clear. Uh, obviously not uh, entirely uh, required anymore with an LED PAPI, but uh, that requirement is still in place. Sighting of the, uh, the PAPI system uh, is again defined in uh, both the ICAO uh, Annex 14 and visual, uh, visual guidelines document and the FAA-30 advisory circular. But here you see an example uh, for the, uh, the FAA market where uh, of course the, uh, the PAPIs are placed off to the side, typically the uh, left hand side of the runway on final approach, uh, approximately 50 feet from the runway edge, and then uh, separation of the uh, PAPI light units at between 20 and 30 feet. And the actual distance back from the threshold is a calculated value uh, based on what the anticipated threshold crossing height is for the most demanding aircraft that is using the airport. Works very, very similar for the ICAO uh, market. Here you can see again 15 meters off the, uh, the runway edge with approximately 9 meters separating each happy light unit. As I mentioned earlier, there's also uh, an abbreviated happy available for both the FAA and ICAO market. And here you can see uh, uh, a typical abbreviated happy uh, for the ICAO market and how they're set up. The distance D1, which is the distance that the PAPIs are mounted uh, back from the threshold, is again the calculated value that is based on the uh, wheel height as the plane goes over the threshold. This just shows that uh, there is a marking on the outside of the PAPI light unit that indicates where the center of the optical field is, and this is used to uh, uh, measure uh, the height of the PAPI above the ground, also used for, for sighting uh, to make sure that uh, the PAPIs are all lined up with each other and are at the same height uh, across, the, uh, uh, across from the runway. A few installation notes. Uh, again, this doesn't really differ from a traditional or classic uh, PAPI installation, uh, so there's uh, there's not much new there. Uh, again, you can uh, take your concrete pad using uh, survey equipment, draw a transverse axis with respect to the runway center line. We uh, give a mounting template in our manual to uh, to show placement of the uh, three PAPI legs and to allow for alignment of those PAPI legs. So place that template into place and then you can drill out the mounting and the flange locations for the, uh, for the three legs. Go ahead and mount the PAPI into place. And then go ahead and aim the PAPI based on the glide slope requirements for the, uh, for the airfield. This shows uh, for the uh, FAA market and actually almost exactly the same for the ICAO market. Of course, uh, the uh, white unit closest to the runway will be 30 minutes or half a degree above the glide path. Next unit over, away from the uh, the runway center line, would be 10 minutes above the glide path. Next unit would be 10 minutes below the glide path, and the unit farthest from the runway will again be half a degree below the, the glide path. Same is true if you have a two box installation, be 15 minutes above the glide path. 15 minutes below the glide path. Mm -hmm. 
Now, as I mentioned, with the inflammometer that is built into each LED PAPI, we'll be able to view that actual uh, measurement, angle measurement, on the outside of each unit as it's being uh, uh, as it's being aligned. So the display will read out directly in hundreds of a degree. So it's a little bit different. We gave you the uh, the FAA gives you those measurements in minutes. Of course, they're being 60 minutes in one degree. Uh, the electronics will show that in hundreds of a degree. So there'll be a little bit of a difference in how that is is uh, read out. It's the same procedure that we use with our digital protractors uh, that we supply now with our uh, our PAPI units. The measurements are in hundreds of degree, not in degrees and minutes. So for example, uh, three degrees and 15 minutes would read out as 3.25 degrees or three and a quarter degrees. And we will supply you with a table uh, inside the manual uh, of the uh, the PAPI unit that shows how to make uh, those uh, conversions from minutes to decimal degrees. Leg adjustment is uh, exactly the same as our PAPI units are adjusted uh, now, the, uh, the halogen PAPIs. So here you see uh, the leg unit where you have a uh, lower rod and then a smaller upper rod and they are coupled with a differential sleeve between the two. And what you're going to be doing is doing your preliminary adjustment using the upper rod assembly at the top and then make your uh, final uh, adjustments with differential sleeve in the middle. And then once that uh, leg is set up in place, you can go ahead and lock it down. So again, with the use of the external uh, display, it's very easy to tell exactly what the light unit is aligned for at any point in time. And so what we're going to be doing then is going ahead and with each lead, we're going to uh, adjust it. We'll adjust the front two first to get the uh, horizontal level of the PAPI unit. So we're going to be reading zero degrees on the horizontal measurement. And then all we need to do is to align the third lead, the rear leg, so that we get the correct vertical angle of that particular light unit. So once we have those measurements, we'll go back through and check them again. And if everything looks right, we can go ahead and lock it down. If it's in the uh, FAA market where we're using the tilt switch functionality, simply press and hold the set button to uh, store those uh, values inside the control board so that it knows when it is out of alignment against those measurements uh, that, uh, that you, just, uh, you just made. We do have a video that describes the alignment procedure and that's going to be available on our website uh, probably beginning tomorrow. So you can go to uh, adv-air.com to uh, be able to see that, uh, that alignment procedure uh, as a video. Uh, also up on uh, YouTube that uh, will we'll show that uh, in more detail. And then uh, the last step, of course, in the uh, FAA market, would be a flight check of the PAPI unit that will be able to verify the alignment angles and there are also procedures that will be in place in the manual for other markets using a self-leveling line laser system to to estimate the to show the the alignment of the the PAPI light unit approximately 15 meters or 20 meters out from the unit or 50 to 60 feet uh, out from the out from the unit and those details will be described in the uh, in the manual associated with the LED PAPI. This just shows some of the messages that uh, might come up uh, to indicate a, uh, uh, a warning on the system. 
for when it's starting up. It'll give you a little bit more information about uh, when it'll be able to provide light output. Again, some different error messages that are available that will tell you exactly what's happening inside the light unit. Okay, here you see some examples on uh, mounting and installing the, uh, the PAPI system. So here's a typical four box, uh, four box system. And uh, what you'll see is uh, uh, either one or in the case of a voltage driven um, PAPI system, uh, the uh, two conduits from the, uh, the, the first box, the rest will have uh, uh, one flexible conduit coming out of it. And those will simply carry the uh, power and uh, communication lines between the, uh, the different uh, PAPI boxes. So here you can see uh, in red, you'll see the power that's being brought to each, uh, each PAPI unit. And then the uh, yellow lines uh, that are included as part of that same uh, uh, cable system are the communication lines going between each unit. One of the things that we've done to uh, simplify the, uh, the installation of the PAPI is to provide a set of connector uh, boxes that go between the, the various uh, PAPI light units. And we provide you with pre-connectorized cables that you see here on this diagram that actually go to the connector boxes, which then attach to each, uh, each PAPI. And what that does is eliminate the need to uh, field splice uh, wiring in, uh, in each uh, base can to uh, bring the, uh, the signals uh, to each uh, signals and power to each uh, PAPI light unit. So here you can see uh, basically what it looks like on the uh, PAPI unit on the left hand side of the screen. You'll see the uh, power, incoming power, uh, going to the, uh, the first uh, PAPI unit. Also that there would be uh, any control signals associated with that, for example, for interlocking it to, uh, uh, to another series circuit. And then you'll see a set of cables going between each happy light unit going up to a connector box. Uh, and then again, another pre-connectorized cable uh, going to the, the, to the next happy unit. So here is uh, an example of the current driven PAPI light unit system. So here uh, again, there is a uh, uh, set of cables that go between uh, each PAPI light unit. And here you see each uh, PAPI light unit uh, requiring a 200 watt isolation transformer to provide the necessary current going up to it. Here's another view of inside the base can. Here you can see the uh, 200 watt isolation transformers. And each are connector, connected to the uh, connection units that are a part of each uh, PAPI light unit. So that is the uh, initial presentation of how the uh, LED PAPI operates. Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, if there are, uh, and by the way, we'll uh, be uh, posting this, this webinar uh, on, our, uh, on our website or making it available to you, uh, feel free to uh, uh, give us a, uh, send in any questions. And I'll be able to take maybe a few questions uh, today if anybody has them and more happy to uh, try to answer them. Uh, the LED PAPI has been available now for about uh, two years in the FAA and IKO market. So uh, uh, we've built up uh, quite a good installation base and have quite a bit of uh, knowledge on their operation now. So uh, anyway, I would encourage you if anybody has any questions, 
Um, let me see here. I can open up the audio to everyone uh, if you're equipped to do that, or uh, you can uh, feel that I noticed that a uh, number of people have uh, found a little chat uh, box as part of uh, the GoTo meeting sessions. Feel free to uh, uh, type out a, a question for us and I'd be more than happy to, uh, to try to answer that. Uh, so uh, let me see, I'm going to try to, to unmute everyone first of all, see if anybody has any uh, questions they wish to ask mm -hmm. or Any questions? Either uh, here we go. Finally got one. A couple. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Um, and the first question. Okay. Uh, and again, uh, one of the questions was: Is can we send a presentation uh, by email? Or I'll find a way to get to the answer is yes. My uh, email address is uh, John J O A J M dot Chapman at ADB Air.com or there's also an email address associated with the uh, uh, the session feel free to send it over there. But uh, we will uh, make that available to you, yes. And another question was on the installed base and uh, yes we've got uh, uh, over 100 TAPI systems that have been uh, shipped over the past two years in uh, both the uh, U.S. and the uh, global market. Another question, do you know when the LED TAPI units will be available for AIP funded projects? And the answer here is no. We are um, obviously uh, very much aware that uh, the FAA is restricting some LED technology uh, at this point in time as to what uh, can be made available with uh, AIP projects and uh, when exactly they're going to be able to uh, free up those funds. I don't know. John, can I help you out on that one? Can you hear me okay? Absolutely. Go ahead. All right. Yeah, they are available for AIP projects, but there's some paperwork you have to do ahead of time because at this time there's only one FA certified manufacturer of LED pappies. So because there's only one manufacturer, there's some extra steps you have to do ahead of time, but technically they are uh, available for AIP funding as I understand it. Yeah, hey John, this is Rick too, and we're finding basically the same thing. We're, we're seeing these guys on AIP projects pretty much everywhere now. Fantastic. Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, next question I had was, uh, does the PAPI system require a control box like a traditional PAPI system? And the answer is no. Uh, Voltage-driven uh, PAPI, LED PAPI, will have uh, the input power going directly into the first, what we call the primary light unit. The light unit is typically farthest from the runway. And thus does not require an additional uh, voltage master or control box associated with it, which plays with the rail on the updated plans to keep the roadway safety area as clear as possible of any equipment that doesn't absolutely have to be there. So. Hey, John, it's Jake here at Airside. Um, is there any plans or talk about reducing the cost on the LED? Pappies because I know right now, given engineer estimates, it's about 40% higher than the halogen. Sure, sure. And uh, that's one of those things uh, that uh, will play out over right now. It is uh, newer technology. The uh, parts required to do that are uh, a bit more expensive than, uh, than uh, what some would look for. 
and over time we expect to see those costs drop uh, and uh, hopefully that will take care of that. So I'll tell you there. And also the other point I would make is that return on investment to be able to be happy is still very, very, very good. So, uh, so far uh, we have not seen a whole lot of resistance to the LEO happy on, uh, on price. Yeah, in a comparison of quartz pappies to LED pappies, it's not that much difference to go to LED, uh, especially when you compare it against, say, runway lights that are quartz, and you go to LED, and they're many times more than the quartz ones. This is a very small amount difference between going from a quartz pappy up to an LED. So I don't see a lot of drop in price yet. Um, but, John, I do have a question. Is uh, other than uh, additional things, now that we've been doing these for a while, uh, what additional options do you see coming out on these? Um, I've heard of baffles and uh, cover screen option. Anything else? The, uh, as far as some of the thoughts we've had on how to uh, uh, add additional options to the LED cabinet, you pick two of them. Uh, uh, baffles are available right now. Um, so that's certainly not an issue. Uh, and we also have a, uh, a cover assembly as you mentioned for the, uh, the LED display uh, to prevent uh, anything from hitting it and uh, doing damage to it. The, uh, the, some of the other things that are being looked at right now uh, include uh, some simple things like a redundant power supply for the uh, IK overhead. Uh, certainly uh, that may have been for too much longer. The, the other areas that we're looking at doing is the use of uh, a uh, kind of a diagnostic system inside the, uh, the app unit to automatically bring both uh, angle information and the alarms and warnings uh, back to the ball, to the control system, or whatever, to uh, kind of remotely indicate, you know, here's what's happening right now. Here's some look at and using the technology that we have right now that is uh, uh, very, very doable. So uh, this is the things that we're excited about right now. Uh, okay. Okay, again, we have another question about making the presentation available. I understand at least uh, uh, one or two of you have had some problems with the audio, and I certainly apologize for that. Uh, uh, one of those things I can't control, but uh, we do have obviously everyone captured here signed up for this. We have uh, uh, indication of uh, who you are. We'll try to get an uh, email out that indicates uh, where we are going to place a copy of this uh, webinar uh, for uh, later review. This might be a problem. Uh, okay. Somebody's asking about the pricing information. What I'll tell you on that is to go back to uh, your uh, EDD uh, sales person or representative, and uh, they'll be able to uh, give a uh, better price uh, for you. Uh, difficult question to answer without knowing more information, so we'll just, uh, we'll just kind of leave it at that for right now. Any other questions or comments that, uh, that you might have? Anybody? Okay. Well, that then, I'll go ahead and uh, close out uh, this session. We hope to be doing more of these in the future. Uh, so, uh, uh, if you have some topics that uh, you know, might be of interest to you, uh, please uh, let, let one of us know or send it back to the uh, meeting address. Association webinar and in the to uh, try to put something together. So, uh, thank you for your participation today. And, uh,